I'm dying to see uh, anybody that cleans up oil in any kind of response at, on the scale that I'm talking about. All right, that, of course, the famous actor Kevin Costner, who has his own ideas about the cleanup. Some of those ideas, pretty good. Anyway, public anger at an all-time high. BP has now replaced Goldman Sachs as the most hated company in America. And Washington, of course, is on the warpath. Take a listen to this. If these long list of companies that are not oil companies but oil service companies have to either go out of business or take bankruptcy or lay off thousands of workers, are you going to ask BP to pick up their salaries and to make them whole? Yes, we will. Uh, BP is uh, responsible and uh, BP is responsible for all the damages that uh, flow from uh, the BP oil spill. All right, so should BP be responsible for paying all of the liabilities? We're talking offshore, onshore, economic costs, business costs, and the salaries of the laid-off workers from the government-imposed moratorium. Let's talk about this. We've got Richard Socrates, Democratic strategist, attorney with Brady Klein Weissman, and our pal Tom Curran of Picar and Abramson. Hello, uh, gentlemen. Hello. You know, uh, Richard, let me start with you. Appreciate you coming back at the nighttime. Goldman Sachs has an estimate out, I saw it today, that BP's total liability, total, okay, criminal, civil, mm -hmm. onshore, offshore, businesses, moratorium, $180 billion, Richard. That is a big number. That number will big. bankrupt them. My uh, question to you is quite simple. Should they be responsible for those liabilities? Well, you know, the, the scale of this disaster is such unprecedented proportion that I think what will eventually happen is that this company, or it's certainly its American subsidiary, at least for the foreseeable future, is going to become just, uh, is going to survive just for the purpose of making the people affected by this whole. I mean, the, the, the magnitude here is so epic that um, we, this company is going to be, you know, right now going to exist for the sole purpose of making, making this better, making this right. But, uh, Richard, just to get the bottom line before we go to Tom Curran, in your opinion, should they be liable for all of it, all they, of it? Soup they should nuts. be liable for all of it. Okay. The question is, I don't think they're going to be able to afford it, right? I, I mean, agree. it's going to be more than, they can, more than even they can pay. Tom Curran, I am to agree with Richard on both counts. A, they caused it, they own it, they should pay for it, not the taxpayers. And B, they're probably going to escape this by going into some kind of Chapter 11 bankruptcy reorganization. What's your take? Well, it depends on when you say they're responsible for it. They're clearly responsible for this catastrophe. They're clearly going to be responsible for the reasonable consequences of, of whatever negligence is shown. They have a duty breach they, uh, and their cause and harm. Uh, they're going to be responsible for that. And part of their corporate fabric now, part of their business model, is going to be dealing with this. That's reality. Uh, whether they're responsible for all of it and whether they're responsible for Mr. Le uh, Secretary Lazar's theories, I don't think they're going to be. But even without that, that bankruptcy is a real option here. Uh, they, owe, they have fiduciary duty to their shareholders, and they may be caused to go into that. They're not going to exist to be a piggy bank for the plaintiff's bar. Uh, they have already said that they're going to settle reasonable claims, claims that well, they are responsible coming. for. You you know, wait a second. Uh, Richard, go back to that one. Tom tried to sneak that in. That's what the, he does, Richard. Piggy he's very, bank for the he's I saw very that piggy clever. Bank. He's a phenomenal attorney. But the piggy bank for the plaintiff's bar, that's kind of a sort of an ugly way of saying they owe what they owe. I mean, Listen, I don't you know. know Darn bit of sympathy for BP. And uh, Larry Dickerson, the head of Diamond, he didn't have any sympathy for him, too. Yeah, he, he was didn't very have much pissed off either. if you heard and him. I, I thought, asked him directly. I, I thought that was a fascinating interview, and I thought the, the two most interesting things he said was that uh, laws may have been broken and that they didn't follow procedures and that this could have been prevented. Right. And if that is right. true, if there's actually some wrongdoing uh, on the part of BP, then it looks like, you know, obviously the sky's the limit. But I think what's important here... Wait, 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 Tom Curran, you're talking criminal liability here, are you not? People well, going it, to jail, pinstripes. It, Tony Hayward can't but, get a pass to the White House, but he may get a pass <laughs> next to Bernard Madoff. Is that what we're talking about? I don't think we're talking about that. I think, uh, look, under... Uh, 
under certain of the criminal statutes, the Clean Water Act and some of the others, uh, there's almost strict liability. And in our society now, if something goes wrong, everybody's responsible. And if something really goes wrong, like a c catastrophe, which this is, and they are responsible, we're talking about criminal liability. Uh, I and think that does that, that, that will pokey? be what drives does them into bankruptcy. Does that not mean pokey? Does that, that not mean pinstripes? I no. ask you, Tom Curran. No, I don't. For Mr. Hayward, absolutely not. You know what I think also? I think it's important to realize that the, we're, on one level, we're talking about legal liability and what people are legally responsible for and what companies are legally responsible for. But if I was advising this company, I would say, look, above and beyond your legal responsibilities, you have a moral responsibility at this point to make this right as as best as you can. And if I were advising them from a, from a communications perspective and from a perspective about doing the right thing, I would already be talking about setting up some kind of charitable trust in which all of their profits for the foreseeable future are set aside to make the whole region uh, you know, as as good as it can be, and bring it well, back as much as it can be, because because uh, uh, separate and apart from what they're legally responsible for, they have a moral responsibility. Well, I, at this no point. doubt, there's right. no doubt about that. And as a matter of fact, their profits for the foreseeable future, and certainly the American subsidiary, are going to be dedicated to just that. Like I said, part of their business model right now is this catastrophe well, and making it right. They, right. They got you know, they got to have enough money. To finish the job, God knows whatever that job is going to be. But after that, I tell you, I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell they're going to survive in their current corporate chapter. I got to get out of here. Richard Sakharides, thank, thank you, you ever so much. Tom Curran, thank you. Thanks, Larry. Coming up in the Color Report, the Dow had its third best day of the year. Third best day of the year is up uh, now above 10,000. But you know what? My question is a simple one because I ain't all that bullish right now. In fact, I'm really not bullish at all. Is today's relief rally? Really a great selling opportunity. We'll have an investor panel coming right up. You're watching the Kudlow Report. BP, pay it all, and criminal proceedings are coming.